Mother-in-law, thank you for taking the time to meet with me for the first time the other day. Oh, Cindy, thank you for taking the trouble to send me a message. But, since we're talking, I have to say something. What? Is there a problem? There are a lot of problems. Huh? First of all, your attitude during our meeting, to be honest, was disappointing. What exactly was the problem? The way you greeted me was not up to par, and your language was not good at all. Do you really intend to be his wife like this? Sorry, I will be more careful. And your clothes are also a problem. They're not classy. How I dress? I thought I chose appropriate clothes. So you have extremely poor taste then? Are you really going to marry Trent? To be honest, I don't think you are suitable to be Trent's wife and our family's daughter-in-law. Oh no, I want to be happy with Trent. Be happy? That's what you want, isn't it? That's not reality. It's not? For example, your cooking. The pastries you served me at yesterday's greeting, to be honest, they were bland and tasteless. Oh, I see. I'm sorry it didn't suit your palate. Anyone can say they have skills. The question is whether or not you can actually produce results, right? Yes. Besides, I'm worried about your family. I wonder how your parents raised you. My parents worked very hard to raise me. But is this the result? I am against the idea of an uneducated woman like you becoming Trent's wife. Uneducated? I have studied hard. But you haven't seen any results, have you? You, only a high school graduate, are not suitable for Trent. Mother-in-law... I can't stand the thought of a woman like you becoming his wife. Oh. If you don't like me, you can stop the marriage. You don't have to force yourself to be his wife. No, but I want to marry Trent. Okay, but be prepared. Don't forget that I'm very strict. Yes, I understand. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? Mother-in-law. Good morning. The day has finally arrived. Please wish me luck. I don't remember you asking me to do anything. Mother-in-law? Have you left home already by any chance? Yes, I have. As the bride, I need more time to prepare. So, I'm on my way to the wedding venue earlier than the groom, Trent. Oh, I see. But, do you really think you can have that wedding? Huh? If you think I don't know anything about it, you're wrong. What are you talking about, mother-in-law? You have no right to call me your mother-in-law. Oh, now I finally don't have to put up with you. A woman like you is not fit to be Trent's wife, let alone part of our family. This is why I told him to stop being with an uneducated woman with only a high school diploma. What are you talking about? Even though I had to worry about the fact that he was in a bigamous marriage. Well, we're not having a shotgun wedding, are we? We registered six months ago, and I found out I was pregnant only two months ago. It hurts to have a black mark on our precious son, but it's better than you being his wife. If you don't cancel the wedding yourself, you will be humiliated in public. What are you talking about? The baby in your belly is your affair partner's child, right? Huh? Where in the world did you come up with that story? Don't think that just because you're pregnant, everything is forgiven and you can get married. Um, what on earth are you doing? Do you really love Trent? Of course I do. I really love Trent. Then why are you trying so hard to get married? 
Are you hiding something? I'm not hiding anything. We really love each other. I can't believe it. I feel so sorry for Trent. How could a woman like you cheat on him and ruin his whole life? Mother-in-law, you misunderstand. The marriage to Trent was decided by both of us. Cancel the wedding now. What do you mean? Well, you're being so brazen. Just leave him already. Fine, I'll deal with it myself. Wait a minute. Trent, where are you? Morning, Mom. What's wrong with you this early in the morning? Maybe you were so excited you couldn't sleep? No, I wasn't. Why should I be excited? I wonder if you are still at home? Yeah, I'm still home. I'm leaving soon. Hey, are you really going to do the wedding today? What? Why? You know, be careful with Cindy. She's betraying you. Huh? What are you talking about? Okay, are you sitting down? Listen to this. So, what is it? That woman is cheating on you. Huh? And furthermore, the baby she's carrying is the child of the person she's cheating on you with. Huh? Look, I won't say anything more about it, but cancel the wedding right now. What are you talking about? Cindy's cheating on me? She wouldn't do that, would she? Yes, she would. Don't be fooled. It's not surprising that a woman with a low level of education would have such vulgar and terrible ideas. Oh, if I knew this would happen, I should have hired a private investigator to do a prenuptial investigation. Then you, my precious son, wouldn't have such a black mark on you. Mom, I don't care if you're my mother. I won't allow you to speak ill of Cindy. Huh? I already know that the problem between you two broke out a long time ago. To be honest, I think it's a good thing I refuse to live with you. Well, oh my god, you've been completely brainwashed by that woman. Brainwashed? Okay, let's see. I'll do what I can for you as your mother. What? I'll expose her true nature. Excuse me? Don't worry. I won't do anything reckless. Please don't do anything strange. She's got to be up to something. Mom, please don't do this. Trent, if you think I'm wrong, show me proof. Proof? I will do whatever it takes to protect your future. Mom, you don't have to worry so much. You really think so? What makes you think that you can trust that woman? I trust Cindy. You should have a little more faith, too. Faith? There are too many uncertainties to trust her. It's a delusion that you created on your own. Delusion? Is it really? The only reason you hate Cindy is prejudice. Prejudice? That's not true. Cindy is trying her best. You should see that. She can't fool me. Why are you so stubborn? Mother-in-law, what were you thinking? You've gone too far, no matter how much you thought you should. It's out of the ordinary. How dare you call me out of order? When you're the kind of person who gets pregnant with your affair partner's child. What are you talking about? That thing in the chapel was terrible. It was pretty funny, wasn't it? How was that funny? When Trent was about to say his vows, you said, Wait! You said that I had cheated on him, and that the father of my child was not him. You even shouted out some unprovable things, confusing the guests. Of course I did. My precious son is pledging his undying love to a disgusting, unfaithful woman like you. It shouldn't happen. 
I did what I did because I knew I had to stop it, even if it meant disrupting the ceremony. But I am not cheating on him, and the baby I'm carrying is his too. Don't lie to me. You are the one who is at fault. Justice is mine. You don't have to come to the reception after this. I wouldn't go even if you didn't say so. Anyway, all your plans are cancelled, right? It's so funny that you still think you and Trent can be husband and wife. I feel sorry for you. Say whatever you want. I will. Well, I'm going to leave now. I'll invite my friend and have a drink to celebrate. I feel so good to have gotten rid of a vulgar, unfaithful woman. I see. If that's how you feel, I'll think about cutting myself off from you. Oh, sweetie, you don't have to tell me all of that, do you? You're not going to be part of the family, after all. I have a lot of plans for the rest of the day, so if you'll excuse me. Okay, okay. I know it must be tough to deal with the aftermath of the cancellation of the wedding. Well, as your last duty, you should do your best. By the way, mother-in-law, there were many important guests at our wedding. They all witnessed your behavior. Huh, what are you saying? I really have a problem understanding poorly educated people. Cindy, you are acting strong but it was just a desperate attempt. I imagine you are very depressed that your wedding was cancelled. But this marriage was impossible from the beginning. This is what happens when you get carried away. You tried to deceive Trent into marrying you. It is your own fault. I can't believe you would allow my precious son to raise a child from a man you cheated on him with. I will never forgive you for that. Oh, yeah. I made sure to pick up the divorce papers. As soon as Trent comes home, I'll have him fill them out and give them to you. You should look forward to it. The wedding ceremony went on without a hitch, actually. Huh? We were able to finish it really smoothly since you were no longer in the way. I beg your pardon? There is one thing I would like to ask you. You said that I cheated on him and that the father of my child is another man. I have no memory of any of this. What? Where in the world did you come up with that story? Well, are you still trying to pretend? That's enough. Answer the question. I don't know. You're such a pain in the ass. Fine, I'll tell you. I saw him this morning. I heard the conversation perfectly. This morning? You met a man on your way to the wedding. What? I heard your conversation. He said, I am so excited about the baby. And you said, Yes, me too. I hope the baby is born healthy. And he replied, Yes, I hope everything goes smoothly. What do you think this means? The baby you're carrying is the child of the man you cheated on your husband with. Now there's no way to get away with it. You know what? I suggest you get a divorce quickly. That man is my brother, Nick. Huh? Actually, Trent was supposed to come to the ceremony with me. But the car battery suddenly died. We couldn't leave right away, so I had to go ahead of him by bus, which takes time. But he was worried about letting me, a pregnant woman, go by myself. My brother, who lives nearby, came along with me. Then, what was that conversation about? He was looking forward to the birth of his niece or nephew, so it was natural for him to talk about it. Ah, uh -huh. That kind of makes sense, actually. Come to think of it, you had never met my brother in person. Until recently, he was living overseas, 
so he was unable to attend any family gatherings. Yes, that's right. In the first place, it's strange that we didn't meet each other before the wedding. Don't you remember that you met each other via video call at that time? What? Of course, I think it's understandable that you can't remember him after seeing his face only once. However... What? No, never mind. Stress is not good for my body, so I will pass the baton to Trent. Stress? I'm making you stressed? Yes, I've reached the end of my patience. What? Emotional stability is important for a pregnant woman. I can't believe I'm stressing you out. It's true. Your words and actions are a big burden to me. Oh. So, I will leave it to Trent to talk about this further. But I just wanted to think about my son. If you think about your son's happiness, I hope you will respect our choice. You really think so? Yes, mother-in-law. We are building a new family. But you guys... Please don't meddle in our relationship anymore. Mom, it's me, Trent. What the hell are you doing to me? Is that what mothers do? Because, Cindy, she's terrible. She says I'm stressing her out. Isn't it true? Huh? You know what? Don't get so puffed up. Huh? Um, what's wrong? You think I don't know anything? What are you talking about? Unannounced visits? Abusive remarks about Cindy? I've heard all about your bullying. Also, I heard you were abusing Cindy's educational background. There are many different types of people in the world. But you and your father both have university degrees. Your wife should have a higher education. Says the high school dropout. What do you mean? I'm not going to say anything more about your education. But how dare you make condescending remarks while ignoring the facts of your own background? Um, how did you know about my education? Because I asked Grandma. What? Well, Dad also told me a long time ago. No kidding. Did you think you were hiding it from me? If so, it's not funny at all. No way. Well, that's why. There's no reason for me and Cindy to divorce. I'm the father of the baby. But... There is a possibility that Cindy is cheating on you, even though you don't know it. No, there isn't. I'll spare you the fine details, but... Cindy and I are co-workers, so we know each other's movements. And we drive the same car to and from work together. There is no way she could cheat on me under these circumstances. But... Cindy said... If she doubts me so much, I'll do a DNA test or whatever. She's so suspicious and won't leave me alone. What? DNA test? Cindy is so stressed out that it's not good for her. I'm going to end this conversation now. Wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I'm going to cut you out of my life. What? That was my original plan after the wedding. Why, Trent? Of course it's because you're bullying my precious wife. Oh. Well, goodbye. Trent, wait. Let's talk more. Talk? Mom, it's too late. Why do you reject me so much? It's because you've done so many terrible things to Cindy. But I was just doing it for your sake. What do you mean, for my sake? It's for your happiness, of course. Your happiness and my happiness are two different things. You don't really mean that. 
If you really care about us, you should respect our decision. But I'm still not convinced. Mom, please don't meddle anymore. It's our life. Um, Cindy? Huh? I told you not to interfere with us. What is it now? Hey, I have a favor to ask you, Cindy. I can't stand the idea of Trent cutting me out. And? I can't stand the thought of losing that boy. I would miss him so much. But considering what you have done to us, it can't be helped, can it? I was wrong. I'll be sure to reflect on that. Will you help me out? If you really feel that way, you should talk to Trent directly. No matter what I say, he doesn't listen to me anymore. And that's because of you, isn't it? You can convince Trent. So, could you please talk to Trent? Me? Yes, you're the only one, because Trent trusts you. But no matter what I say, I think Trent's determination is firm. Don't say that. I know you can do it. I can't stand the idea of not being in his life. So dramatic. Please, Cindy, please convince Trent. I don't trust your apology, so I refuse. Don't say that, Cindy. You're the only one I can ask anymore. Please, ask Trent not to cut me out. Cindy. After that, my mother-in-law seemed to have messaged and called Trent many times, but Trent never responded. As for my father-in-law, he was so disgusted with his wife's behavior that he left home and began a quiet life by himself. The divorce will be officially finalized soon. He seems to be living a comfortable life away from Trent's mother, enjoying fishing every day. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law was tormented by loneliness and even began to cause trouble for the neighbors. She started to spread her resentment towards us and blamed others for her loneliness. Eventually, the neighbors began to avoid her and she became even more isolated. Now she has no one to talk to and spends her days lonely. We have started a new life together and have been able to feel really happy without her interference. Trent and I will work together to make sure that this happiness does not leave us. Are you busy right now? I'm sorry to bother you while you're working. Can I talk to you for a minute? What is it, Christina? I just got back from a business trip, but I just want you to know about my concern. Huh? Was it today that you're coming back? No, I finished work earlier than I had planned, so I managed to go home a day early. Oh, I see. Are you telling me that I shouldn't have come home early? You seem disappointed somehow. No, I'm not. I just didn't think it was today, that's all. Anyway, what's wrong? I think someone broke into our house. What? Why? When I came home, I felt strange. What do you mean? The furniture is arranged slightly different from before. Did you move our furnitures? No, I didn't. I see. It's weird. Seriously, since you were away for some days, maybe you misunderstood. Hmm, at first I thought so, but I think some of them are missing. No way. Did you use the money inside an envelope in the drawer at the study? Money? I don't even know that it was there. Really? Then maybe it's a burglary. Is that so? That's not good. Yeah, the cash in the study and some of my jewelries are missing too. I'm sure that someone had broken into the house and took them. Uh, yeah. That's why I just called the police. You called the police? The cash and the jewelry were taken. It's definitely a burglary, right? Maybe you put them somewhere else and you just forgot about it. If it was just cash, I would have thought so, but the jewelries were inside the jewelry box, so there's no way I could have forgot about where they were. 
But if you call the police without looking for those things that went missing first, you'll be in trouble. You'll also embarrass yourself in the end. Why don't you try to search for them again? Why are you stopping me from calling the police? Do you know something about this? I don't know, but I think it's too early to call the police. It's not like the room was ransacked or the locks were broken, but there were some small things missing from the living room too. That's very odd, don't you think so? I don't think a thief would be interested in stealing away small decorations. Is that so? Oh, the police are here now, so I'll tell them what happened. Felix, I was right. Looks like it's definitely a burglar. So, can you come home soon? Oh, now? Why? Because you're the head of our household, so it's natural. Besides, I was on a business trip for a week. I was wondering about the different furniture arrangement, or if you changed the interior design. And the police want to talk with you about that, too. That's such a sudden request. I can't. I'm at work right now. For heaven's sake, our house has been burglarized. Your company will understand, won't they? I have an important meeting soon. I don't think I can leave. But I'm scared, and I'm worried about being alone, too. You're not a child. Don't be so naive. Let me know when you know the outcome, okay? Bye. Wait, Felix. Have you finished your meeting? Oh, are you done with the police? Please, come home soon. I really need you. What? You can handle this on your own, can't you? It's no big deal. You worry too much. But the police said they need to check something with you. They want me to call you. Huh? Are you telling me that I'm being suspected? Of course not. It's only natural to ask to speak to the people involved, isn't it? I wonder why you refuse to talk to the police. What's wrong with you, Felix? I'm not refusing to talk to them, but I'm busy at work, so I can't leave. Why? It's a big deal. You should explain to your company about what's going on. It's an emergency. I told you, I'm in the middle of an important meeting. I can't just leave. The meeting started from an hour ago. It's over now, isn't it? No, it's still going on. Then why are you texting me? We're having a break now. What do the cops want to check with me anyway? The police checked our house and found out that there were no signs of forced entry. Does that mean there was no break-in? So it was your mistake after all, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It can't be a misunderstanding because a lot of things are missing. The police searched the whole house. The whole house? Yes, they told me that they found a third party's fingerprints. No kidding, so it was a burglary after all. But there's something weird. What do you mean by weird? The place where the owner of the fingerprints touched is different from a normal burglar. What? I don't get it. In most cases, burglars usually only look in places where they think there might be money or goods. This burglar touched so many things inside the house. What kind of burglar is that? I don't know. Maybe they wanted to find something valuable. But they also went through the bathroom and the kitchen. The police even found fingerprints on the microwave oven. Why on earth would a burglar do that? They must have been very desperate. Maybe it was a vindictive burglar. Don't be silly. Besides, there's no broken windows and the locks weren't broken. So what? There must be someone who invited the burglar into the house. They said it's impossible to enter the house without a key. But you don't invite a burglar into your house, do you? That's right, so that would mean the person had the keys. Our keys were stolen. That's why the cops wanted to ask you if you lost your keys or not. I have the keys with me. I guess I have to make sure I get a good look at them. So will you please come home? I'm telling you I can't go home right now. It can't be helped then. Anyway, I'll go talk to the police. Felix, I checked with the police. I see. There's nothing to worry about since I didn't lose my keys, right? They said that they have to check the keys. Since you can't come home right away, you can just send me a picture of the keys. 
The police said that a picture is acceptable for now. Why do I have to do that? What? You can take a picture of those keys in two seconds, can't you? We're in the middle of an investigation, so you have to cooperate. I told you, I'm in a meeting right now. A family emergency would be taken into consideration by your company. Besides, you're on break, right? What's wrong with you, Felix? I'm about to go back to the meeting. Are you telling me that you don't have the keys with you? That's not what I mean. I'm coming home every day, so it's only natural that I have the keys, right? Then why do you refuse so much? I think there's something fishy about you. It's not weird. I just don't have them with me right now. I'm in the conference room. Huh? Where are your keys then? It's in my bag at my desk. I'm in a meeting right now, so I'm in a different room. I see. Anyway, the police have to check it. They say they can't finish their investigation if you don't allow them to do that. Can you get out of the meeting room for a while and go take a picture of the keys? You can at least do that, right? Please cooperate, Felix. Well, what's wrong, Felix? Are you there? Please reply to me. The police are waiting for you too. How long are you going to make us wait? The police said they gave up. Oh, okay then. You're sending me a reply. Why are you able to do that? The meeting has just finished. Really? So you can come home, right? The police are still here. What? The police are still there. I still have work to do after this, so I can't go home. I just got some extra tasks. It's tough being an office worker. Huh? The meeting is over, right? Just come home, okay? I still have to put together the materials after the meeting and so on. I still have a lot of things to do. I'm busy. When I asked you to send me a picture of the keys, you didn't reply. And when I told you about the police are still here, you're telling me that you can't come home. That's crazy. That's not true. Did you lose your house keys? What are you talking about? How could I lose it? Because I have the keys here. What? You found them at our house? I mean, there's an unfamiliar woman, and she had the keys with her. What? Stop fooling around. Why would a stranger like her have the keys to her house? You're gonna have to explain that to me. I don't know. Maybe I dropped the keys somewhere. Don't play dumb with me, Felix. I know that you're hiding something from me. You're having an affair, aren't you? What are you talking about? I'm the one who wants to know. I already know all about this. Your girlfriend didn't know I was home, so she was kind enough to bring me the keys. Then she saw the police coming and she panicked. The police questioned her, so she confessed about the affair. I don't want to hear any more excuses from you, Felix. Wait a minute. There's no way I would betray you. That woman lied. I was away from home on a business trip. She said that she's been with you all week. How could she find out that I've been gone for a week if no one told her about that? Moreover, she knows that I was on a business trip. You're right. Maybe she did some research in advance. That doesn't make any sense. Well, but you don't have any proof that I was cheating on you. You lied to me by pretending that you don't know anything about the affair. That's disgusting. That's not what I mean. Explain to me then. This woman is a stranger. Are you telling me that she stole your keys? No. Well, I don't know. Then I'll tell that to the police and have them arrest her. That's fine, right? It's a burglary anyway. No, wait. You don't have to do that, okay? Why not? She stole the keys from you, so that's a crime, right? I lost my keys, and she brought them back. Then what? You just let her in and out our house for a week? I didn't do that. Are you stupid? That's enough. I'm sorry. You gave your keys to that woman, right? Yes, that's correct. She's the one you're having an affair with, wasn't she? Yes, I deeply apologize. The police just took her fingerprints, and it was a perfect match. You can't hide the truth any longer. But I didn't know she stole money and goods just because I let her come inside the house. I know she said that she didn't mean to do that. Well, then it's settled. Yes, it's settled. I want a divorce. What? Why? Hold on a sec. 
I didn't steal anything, did I? Stop talking nonsense, Felix. You brought your girlfriend into our house while I was away on a business trip. I'm sorry. If an apology can solve every trouble in this world, I believe that the police won't exist. <laughs> Thus, we had a divorce. The woman was free to come and go with the key Felix had given her. She ransacked the house and stole some money and goods. I think she was after the money from the beginning. Of course, she is going to be taken care of by the police and put behind bars. But there was something else wrong with this woman. Christina, help me. Please, answer me. Huh? I have nothing to say to you. Thank you for your reply. What do you want? Well, actually, that woman has put me as a guarantor for her debts. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I know it's my fault, but please help me. I can barely make ends meet. She maxed out my credit cards for online shopping. She even took out some cash in advance. It's all my debt, and I can't pay for all of them. Christina, don't you feel sorry for your ex-husband that he's struggling? Don't you want to help someone you still love? Stop blabbering nonsense, Felix. Don't be silly. I mean, that woman stole money and goods from our house, so you shouldn't have let her use your credit card. I didn't think that she would dare to do something like that. She didn't seem like a person with bad personality. You're an idiot. I'm sorry, but you're just too stupid to understand. What? You don't have to say that much. It's your fault that I cheated on you. Huh? Don't make weird accusations. How can it be my fault? It's 100% your fault. You were busy with work and went on business trips all the time. I was alone in our house. You're the one who cheated on me while you were on your business trips, weren't you? I want my alimony. I didn't cheat on you. If you doubt me, why don't you find out where I went for my business trips? I was on my own for my entire business trips. If you check where I was staying and where I was working, you can get the proof that I was alone all the time. I was just working diligently. Why don't we start over then? Please? What are you talking about? You're contradicting yourself. The divorce was finalized a long time ago. So, let's get remarried. I beg you. No, I don't. Who on earth would remarry a cheating jerk who's trapped in an enormous amount of debt? Don't say that. It's terrible. You still love me, don't you? Cut it out, okay? You were the one who cheated on me. It's all your fault. I'm sorry. I sincerely apologize. So can you at least spare me the alimony? I can't pay you because of what that woman did to me. I don't care. I want my alimony. You're a child, Felix. Don't be so naive. Oh no, what am I supposed to do? I can't make a living. When I was in trouble, you said that I should handle that on my own. Don't be so selfish. But since I'm a kind-hearted person, let me give you some advice. Really? Tell me then. If you can't pay for the alimony, then ask your parents to lend you some money and work it out. You must pay the alimony in one lump sum. I'm not going to change my mind. Contact me when you know the outcome. Bye! I received a number of persistent messages from Felix. I read through them but didn't reply at all, just like what he did to me last time. I don't think I should give him any reply. In the end, Felix asked his parents to pay the alimony on his behalf. He was allowed to live at his parents' house. I was relieved that the alimony was paid. However, he was supposed to repay the alimony to his parents. I heard that he is working from morning till night every day. He's too selfish to have an affair while I was away for a business trip and even gave his girlfriend the keys. He really is an idiot. What comes around goes around, so he deserves that. I wonder if you and Robert have discussed your plan for the year and Alexandra. You are married into a family of which members are famous investors for generations, so you'd better get your act together. 
If you don't arrange your schedule early, you'll have a hard time later. I know. Robert seems to be very busy at work. I can't make a definite appointment since it depends on his workload. We're thinking to come and greet you on the New Year's Day. New Year's Day? Stop kidding me! What? Why? You need to help me with the cooking and cleaning too. You're my son's wife, aren't you? Cleaning and cooking? We are preparing a little bit at our place, so we don't plan on doing anything extravagant for New Year's Eve. We don't have kids, so it won't be time-consuming. I might go wash the car, though. What are you talking about? I know your house is a mess. I'm talking about cleaning up my house, not your house. Sorry about that. What are you going to do then? I told you to come over here and clean up. You should have understood that. I wonder if you are really aware of your responsibility as my son's wife. Robert is working, so I don't think I should go alone. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can help you to clean up your house. What did you say? Robert can come over later. First of all, it's common sense for you to come home early to do the cleaning and make the festivities. Can't you even understand that? Huh? Is that common sense? I've never heard about such thing before. In a wealthy family like ours, that's the norm everywhere. You'd better remember that. As my son's wife, it's your duty. Our cooking class will be closed from late December, so why don't you come here on December 28th? That's impossible. You're supposed to come. It's your duty as my son's wife. Why don't you obey me? I'll have to teach you how to clean, cook, and so on properly. But if I go there, I can't cook for Robert, right? That's impossible. I'm his wife, so I can't just leave him alone. Besides, it takes two hours to get to your house, so I can't even make a day trip. You can do that if you just get up early in the morning and get ready. You're just not good at time management. It's impossible. Anyway, just come. I've got shopping to do. I'll be in trouble. I'll send you a list now so you can get it when you come. You can at least do that for me, right? Crab, sirloin beef, and so on. All of them are expensive things. I can't afford it. Will you pay for that? We really can't afford it. Are you kidding me? I'm the teacher. You need to pay for the materials as a student. Real good stuff doesn't come cheap. That may be true, but I have a life here too. Don't talk nonsense. Just do as you are told to. I'll talk to Robert about this. I ended the message with my mother-in-law and told Robert about it when he came home that night. Robert looked a little peeved and said he'll let his mother know that we won't pay a visit to her in late December. Alexandra, what did you say to Robert? He called me out of the blue this morning and told me to stop bullying you. You said something nasty to him, didn't you? I just told him what I said to you yesterday. I didn't lie. I only talked to Robert about it because I didn't want to cause you any inconvenience. What are you talking about? You're such a useless woman. It's your duty to make things work out, isn't it? You really don't know anything about common sense. You may be young, but you lack knowledge. That's quite a rude thing to say, Umbriel. It's the first time anyone ever said that to me. If you don't discipline yourself now, you could be in big trouble. Please don't bring disgrace to our family name. You know that our family has been famous for generations, right? I didn't do anything that will dishonor the family. You didn't do your duty. Our ancestors became great warriors because they did their duty properly. So you must learn from them. Is that clear? I understand. As Robert's wife, I will do my best. That's not what I mean. 
You need to realize what your duty as my son's wife is. I'll consult with Robert and try to make it work. Oh, do you have any plan for the New Year's Eve? It can't be help. You don't have to visit me this year. You'll have to think about it by next year. Yes, ma'am. That's how I avoided the preparations at my parents-in-law's house for New Year's Eve celebration. I spent the New Year's Eve with my husband and visited my in-laws at the beginning of the new year. We had lunch together to celebrate the new year. And just when I thought I was enjoying a peaceful life for a while, within a week after that, I received a message from my mother-in-law again. Alexandra, do you have a knowledge about how to apply for final tax returns? Final tax returns? I don't know much about it, but I think I know as much as anyone else. Oh, well, I guess that means you can do it. What do you mean by that? I only know as much as anyone else. That means you know how to do it, right? Well, yes. I want you to do my final tax return. My husband did it until last year, but from this year, I have to do it. The problem is, I don't really understand it. That's why I need you to do it. You're currently living on your husband's pension, right? Yes. What's with that? In that case, it should be tax-free. Tax-free? It means you don't have to file a final tax return for that. Oh, really? But if you have other income, you need to pay tax. You are teaching your own cooking classes, right? You need to apply for final tax return in that case. Is that so? I'm stumped. I don't know what to do. I really don't know. If the income from your class is less than $2,000 a year, I think you don't have to do it. But in your case, it must be over $2,000 a year since you have many students. Don't worry. It's just a hobby. I don't earn that much. In that case, I don't have to file a final tax return, right? I think so. But I'm not an expert in such things, so I think it's better to ask a professional. I think you should go to a consultation at the tax office. It's free anyway. Yes, I'll think about it. There was nothing wrong with the messages we exchanged. But most of the messages I received from Umbriel were quite rude. She always tries to force me to do whatever she wants. To be honest, both my husband and I were getting fed up with her behavior. Still, nothing was that bad, so we were still able to put up with it. But then, we received another message from my mother-in-law that astonished us. Alexandra? I'm sorry to bother you so suddenly, but I'd like to ask you something. How can I help you? This is just a hypothetical question. If I give you some money, will you break up with Robert? Huh? I said it's a hypothetical question. You can use your imagination to answer that. What do you think? Do you know what you're talking about? Are you asking me to sell Robert for money? Even if it were hypothetical, it's impossible. I told you to just use your imagination. I can't imagine myself doing that. You're so inconsiderate. It's just some sort of joke. It's not an unusual thing. But I think it's quite a vulgar thing to say. Even though you are my mother-in-law, it's still unforgivable. To tell you the truth, there's a woman I know who comes from a prominent family like ours. The daughter of that family seems to have fallen in love with Robert. She's a wonderful daughter. That's hypothetical, right? Seems that Robert also likes her. He's quite serious about this matter. So I'm going to pay you and ask you to divorce Robert. Tell me what you think. I told you that even if it were hypothetical, I can't imagine such a thing. We are living in a modern world. Well, 
It won't be hypothetical in the near future, so just be prepared for that. Please don't do that. I really hate that kind of thing. After the somewhat creepy and uncomfortable exchange of messages was over, this time, Robert called me to tell me that he had been summoned to his parents' house for an emergency and that he had no choice but to go there. I have a bad feeling about this. Robert told me that he would be late and that I could go to bed first. But I couldn't go to sleep, so I decided to stay up and wait for him. When Robert came home before midnight, he was a little surprised to see me up and waiting for him. He didn't say much and was acting a little strange. He said he was tired and was about to go to bed, but I forced him to tell me what happened at his parents' house. He was a little hesitant, but he told me about what happened. The next day, I contacted my mother-in-law. Hello, Umbriel. Can you please explain everything to me? Oh, Alexandra, what's wrong? Robert told me about what you said to him. So the story about the wealthy woman was only half true. You were lying, weren't you? I didn't expect you to believe me. It's all going to come true anyway. What do you mean by that? Besides, why are you taking the liberty of saying that I'm supposed to be happy to get the money out of your pocket and break up with Robert? I never said anything like that. Please stop making things up on your own. That's why I said it would happen in the end, because you didn't listen to me properly. Of course, Robert would rather have a daughter from a wealthy family than someone like you. The fact that you listened to me so patiently is the best proof of that. I'll give you the money, and I want you to leave my son. I have received an offer from the daughter of a wealthy family. If I don't do something, my family name will be dishonored. I couldn't believe it when I heard you told Robert that I had agreed to leave him. If someone told you about that all of a sudden, of course you'll be surprised, won't you? That's how you lied to us and tried to separate us from each other, right? What a cruel thing to do. I don't think so. I'm going to pay you anyway. Robert will get married to the woman from a wealthy family, so all of us will end up living a happy life. You'll be a little rich too, since you'll receive the money from me. Robert and I have no intention of leaving each other. If you don't listen to me, I'll think about another plan to make my wishes come true. That night, I showed Robert all the messages with my mother-in-law when he came home. Then we talked about our future plans. We all agreed that things are going to get worse if we don't do something about it. We were worried about the situation alone, so we told my parents about the situation and asked for their help. When we had a plan in place, I contacted my mother-in-law again. Umbriel, may I talk to you now? Alexandra, what's going on? Actually, about the other day... Oh, you mean about your divorce from Robert? Yes, about that. I've made up my mind, so I thought I'd let you know. Finally! Go ahead then! I'm divorcing Robert. I see! Well, you've made up your mind. I'm glad to hear that. I think it's the smartest thing to do. After all, family status is something to be cherished. That's where you and Robert didn't get along. I'm really sorry to hear that. May I continue? Of course. Anyway, I'll make sure to pay you the money, so don't worry. Does that mean you will pay for my divorce from Robert? Well, that's the way it's going to turn out. What's wrong with that? Well, that's a relief. Also, I'll be over there this weekend, and I was wondering if you can help us with the divorce papers. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind. Then I'll be looking forward to your visit. That weekend, Robert and I went to Umbriel's place and asked her help with the divorce papers. Thus, Robert and I became strangers to each other. Umbriel invited us to have dinner with her, but we refused, 
for the reason of cleaning up our house and headed home. There were many things to do, so Robert and I split up to finish everything. Alexandra, is this a good time for you to talk? Yes, ma'am. It's been a while, isn't it? Why did you address me like that? What? Because Robert and I are divorced. You are not my mother-in-law anymore, right? We are strangers. That's true, but... Did I say something funny? No, you didn't. I wonder if you've been in touch with Robert. Why? Robert and I are divorced. I know that, but I can't get in touch with him. He hasn't sent me any money for this month. I didn't know about that. I'm no longer his wife. I'm really troubled. But you can cover your living costs with the tuition fees from the cooking class, right? We've had a few more students recently, but that's not enough. I'm having a hard time making ends meet. You've had more students? Congratulations on that. Then you must have a good amount of tuition fees coming in, don't you? Even so, it's just a modest amount of $1,000 a month. I was counting on Robert to pay me every month, but he hasn't contacted me. I know you're going through a lot, but I wish you the best of luck. Hey, Alexandra, will you explain to me? It's been a while. What happened? It seems like Robert is staying at your place. What's going on? The two of you are divorced, aren't you? You're not married, are you? I just received a letter that mentions about cutting ties from Robert. What in the world is going on? Oh, are you talking about Robert? Yes, he's at my house. He's still here beside me. What do you mean? All my plans have messed up and I'm in big trouble now. What should I do? Are you talking about your plan to get Robert marrying the daughter of a wealthy family, wipe out your debts, and double your allowance each month? What? How do you know about that? I heard it from the wealthy family you mentioned, before me and Robert got divorced. Huh? What do you mean? Here's what I mean. The plan was to get a divorce once, then cut ties with you and remarry in the end. That's how it was going to be. By the way, Robert has changed his job and his address too, so there's no way you can find us. Oh no! You tricked me, didn't you? Anyway, the wealthy family you mentioned before was surprised. They told me that they were only joking about having their daughter marrying Robert. But it seems that you took it so seriously. I thought they were serious. For your information, the daughter of that wealthy family already has a boyfriend. You can't force her to break up with her boyfriend, can you? It's not too late. Just tell Robert to come home as soon as possible. If he doesn't do that, the family house will be taken away. Do you really have that much debts? How much money do you owe? Anyway, you still haven't given me the money you promised me when me and Robert got divorced. What are you talking about? I'm just kidding, but there's something else I need to tell you. What? When we talked about filing tax returns, I told you that $2,000 a year is tax-free. So what? You said the other day that you earn about $10,000 a year, right? Did you file your final tax return for that? I didn't. I thought so. I don't understand about what you're trying to tell me. If you haven't, I think that would be considered as tax evasion. Seriously? That's not good. Can't you do something about it? There's nothing we can do. That's why I said you should at least ask for advice from the professionals. I gave you good advice, you know that. Can you keep this as a secret? I'll do it properly next year. It's too late to do it properly next year. You told me that a member of a wealthy family must do his or her duty properly, didn't you? You're right. It would be a shame to get arrested. You're helping me, aren't you? 
Thank you. If you don't do your duty by yourself properly, you will dishonor the family. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Oh, no. As a good U.S. citizen, I think we have to fulfill our duties to pay the tax. That's what everyone else is doing. So I already reported about that to the authorities. Huh? How dare you? I'm sure you'll have some auditors entering your house soon for investigation. Please take care of that. You're kidding, right? Tell me that it's just a joke, Alexandra. I'm sorry, but it's true. I don't want that. My family will be dishonored. My mother-in-law's debt had reached seven figures after all. And with additional charges added to it, it was impossible for her to repay the debt. That's the result of not listening to the advice of others. I was so surprised that I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Instead of taking all the money, my mother-in-law's relatives confiscated the house. Umbriel herself had to repay the debt steadily while helping with various things at the relative's house. She should be grateful to be allowed to live in the relative's house anyway. It's too far for us to go and visit her since we need to take a flight. I heard that her cell phone was taken away too, so we may never see or hear from her again. Robert is working hard at his new job. He is getting along well with my parents, and he seems to have finally got his days back to normal. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time!